All right, so in this handout, it says explain why each expression below is not in simplest form and then fix it. So I'm going to highlight whatever is actually not in simplest form. So we have different situations and we're going to just recognize each one of them here. So if we look at the first one, five to the third, this regular number, we just need to go ahead and, ex and uh, put in the calculator. So when it says explain why each one, all I want you to do is just write down, well, five to the third is going to equal, when you plug it in the calculator, you'll get a number, and it's gonna be um, 125. So the M3, you can't put that in the calculator, but I know that this is going to be the final form. So on this one, we're gonna put 125 m to the third power. So we don't want any regular numbers with exponents. You wanna go ahead and put those in the calculator. The other thing we don't want is negative exponents. So remember, these need to jump. All right, all right, yeah, actually I should've wrote that here. Uh, these need to go ahead and jump. So if it's on the top, you wanna go ahead and make a fraction then you're gonna put it on the bottom here. So this is what's gonna make it positive. So this is actually the final answer. So you have x to the fifth divided by y squared. Okay. Now, what's wrong here is that we have an outside parenthesis. So remember, we need to separate. Separate, I think I spelled that right. So the regular number with the four, and then you got the c to the four because of the outside number. Now this is the same problem as this one. All right, I need to go ahead and put this in the calculator. So two to the fourth power, I believe that's uh, two times two is four, times two is eight. I believe it's gonna be 16. So then my final answer is 16. Remember, you can't put the letters in the calculator, so go ahead and put your C4. Over here, we have the zero rule. Anything raised to zero. All right, so the zero rule means that the x raised to the zero is going to equal one. We're not gonna do anything to the y, so really it's just gonna be one y. Do you need to put the one there? No. It can just look like the y by itself. Right here, if you have the same letter on the top and the bottom, remember put a little one here when it's missing. Who has more? The top has more, so it'll be d to the sixth power, when this is deleted, you put a one on it. Now we're not gonna put, if there's a one on the bottom, guys, this only applies to this situation. When there's a one on the bottom, you're just gonna go ahead and write down D6. This is kind of like, if I have like five divided by one, that equals five, it's the same thing here. If it's divided by one, just write it by itself. So from now on, anything with a one on the bottom, we're just gonna go ahead and copy it down as a, a regular number. All right. Um, so right here, guys, we have some uh, things that we're going to break down. So these, you're going to multiply the regular numbers, add the exponents. We've done that before. All right. Some of these with the negatives, though, they're a little bit tricky. So I'm going to kind of break it down for you. So for example, here, let's say we multiply these regular numbers, 4 times 9. All right. This is going to be 36. But look at the z's. On the z's, we have a five and a negative number. Five times negative 12 is negative 60. All right, so that's what we've done all the time. I'll put a little dash on the z right here. Now here, we have to think about separating the regular number and this z number, because it's a negative. So you're gonna put a one under it, and then this needs to go to the bottom. All right, we haven't really seen these before. But that 36 number stays on the top, the regular one, or coefficient, really, I should say. And the z60 goes to the bottom because we have a negative exponent, and then we just move it to the bottom. So that'll be the final answer. We just leave it like that because we can't divide anything. Same thing here. Let's multiply these numbers. You have the 5, the 3, and the negative 2. All right. Multiply them, you're going to get a negative number, and then add all the x's together. Remember, this is a 1, and add all the y's together. So even though this is a negative regular number, this will be negative 30 when you multiply them, you're still just adding the x exponents and then adding the y exponents. 
right. right here, the regular numbers would be like one and three, so it'll be three. Now, when you have double exponents like this, right? So remember, you're gonna multiply them. So negative two times two, x to the fourth power. All right, let me put a dot to separate everything so y'all can kind of see it. Now remember, I already took care of the three times one. That's how I got that three over here. But this one has an outside exponent and these got some inside exponents. Let's put a one. One times three, so that's gonna be x to the three. Over here, I have the y. 5 times 3, that's 15. All right. So now that I took care of everything here. Oh, actually, you know what? I made a mistake. 3 to the third power. I should have made that. Put a little 3 right there. There you go. So now remember the regular numbers. You type this in the calculator. It'll be 27. Add the 4s and the 3 together for the x number. And the y number is already set. So what is this number for the x? All right, let's keep going. Here, remember, put this in the calculator. Oh, let me go in order. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So it says a rectangular prism with the width of x inches, a length of x squared y inches, and a height of y inches. Write the expression that would represent the volume of the rectangular prism. So the formula of the volume of rectangular prism is length times width times height. So they already gave us all of the stuff that we need. So the length times the width times the height. My length is x squared y times, the width is just gonna be x times, and then the height is y squared. Now, if you want guys, you can put a regular number in the front of each one of them, you don't have to. All you're gonna do is add the exponents. So let's put a one Here, let's put a one on this one. So multiply the coefficients. Technically, this is gonna be a one. This is gonna be a one. This is gonna be a one. Multiply your regular numbers, add the exponents. All right. Find the area of the shaded square below. Note the area of a area of a square is a equals s squared. So that means side. So really guys, what happens is that the side is this number, and then it's gonna be squared. So this has an outside parenthesis with some inside stuff. So separate it, six squared, and then multiply these for the A number, and then multiply these for the B number. Okay, that's all you're supposed to do there. On this one, all right, you might want to go ahead and put these in the calculator one by one. Three squared, three to the fifth, and then you also might want to move this to the top part. So this is going to be next to each other. They're going to add. These are one on top of the other because they don't move. So remember, who has more? All right. Start by, I would start by putting these in the calculator. Or you can also think about it this way. You got three squared and three to the fifth. So there's more threes on the bottom. There's three more. M5 stays there. M7 stays there. T6 stays there, but now I have a T5. All right. So then from here on the top part, who has more M's? This number, whatever this is in the calculator, stays on the bottom. And then figure out the M's. The T's, all you have to do is just add them. All right. Find the missing exponent. So the answer is supposed to look like this, x squared over one, so the top has more. If there's four on the bottom, and I know that there's two left over, how many are on the top? See if you can figure that one out. This one, remember, if it's a regular, put a one under it. So right here, the top has more. That's what the answer is. So that means how many were on the bottom? How many had to get deleted to have four on the top? And then right here, notice how these answers, you have 12, but it started with two. This one had three, and you started with eight. So what did they have to multiply? What number did I multiply times two? So two times the number equals 12. 
or over here, three times the number equals eight. There's supposed to be a number I put here, so these are true. See if you can figure that out. Uh, solve each expression. Y'all are good at this. Who has more? This one. When you see a fraction, guys, the top is going to get the outside, and the bottom is also going to get the outside. I don't think I've ever explained that. Now, what happens here? They're both negatives, so they're both supposed to jump. So it means that this is going to go to the bottom part, and this is going to go to the top part. So they like do like a little flip. It's kind of weird. All right. Here, the same thing. This three has to go to everything. So I'm going to have five to the third power times a to the third power. And then on the bottom, we have a little a three. That's my inside exponent, but this is now an outside exponent. So you have to multiply them times a to the zero with a little three, so you have to multiply them. All right, so these are getting kind of like difficult now. All right. <clears throat> so right here, guys, you have to multiply straight across, and then you start dividing. So I'll put a little star next to 18, because that one might be kind of difficult. I'll skip that one for now. Probably do it together. Uh, over here, this x22 is ready to go, but you have to multiply these. So x22 times, and this is going to be x what? And then you have to add them. You have to keep going. All right, remember to put these in the uh, calculator and then these switch for the negatives. Uh, put a star next to 21. We'll do that one together. And next to 22. All right. I'll probably go ahead and help you separate number 23. I should be able to do number 24. It'd be a little bit tricky, but see if you can figure that one out. And you should be able to do 25. Just remember, do everything one at a time.